Welcome! Today I'm going to be unboxing and setting up an Elegoo Saturn 8K 3D printer. I already have a original Saturn and now I just want to try the slightly upgraded model. Power cord, US, that's where I'm at. Toolkit. It comes with a filter, which is nice. This actually looks taller than the little ones that uh, I have. My other one. Gloves. Tools. AC adapter. Jump drive files. Scraper that uh, I never use these, but I would actually use silicone scrapers. They work a lot better. USB on this one is on the right side there. I did not realize it. It doesn't matter to me. But I don't see a network port on this one. But I don't use the network port on the other one anyway. No adjustable feet. This has a port specifically for that filter. I don't see a screen protector on here otherwise. It seems like the original one actually has a screen protector on the screen as well. This is aluminum. It looks plastic but it is metal. And this shield does have a little hole cover on it, which you can put a fan in, or in my case, I'm going to put a little heater in there. Ooh. Just a little fan there, had this on top. That's a big old chunk of carbon. And the others that they have that are standalones, there's maybe that much carbon in it. Take this back off. Free to move however it wants. Move to zero. Make sure that it's straight as well as straight there. Hold it down. Now you shouldn't be able to pull the card out, but it's not big enough <laughs> to grab onto it to see if you can pull it out. And then we're going to go back, we're going to set that, this is the new zero. Reset it to this, yes, confirm. Okay, now that should be set and then we can just get it out of here. Let's see. 
It works, yay. So that's that. Everything is working as intended. So now we can start a print. This is my first 8K printer. This is my first 8K resin. Graciously provided by Nova 3D. Thank you very much, Nova 3D, for letting me try out your resin. This is their 8K resin. So I'm going to slice something, figure out what parameters I, I want to use for this resin on this machine, and we'll see how that does. Okay, I've got a test print loaded. And for the first print I'm going to do, I'm not going to do anything fancy. I'm just going to do a, an exposure test to see if my settings are correct. And you can do this with any resin that you haven't printed before on any machine. There are a bunch of different models out there. Uh, the one I'm using it happens to be by Frozen. But that doesn't really matter. I just like it because it's smaller so it doesn't take as long to print as the Rook, which is typically used by... Uh, most machines. Nova 3D's standard 8K resin in gray. And I went onto their website to get the recommended settings for it. They have some recommended settings in the picture for the product that was different than uh, what they have on their spreadsheet, but their spreadsheet was uploaded like two days ago. So I'm going off of the spreadsheet because that's the most recent, as far as I know. Again, that's what these tests are for. And once we have a good exposure setting, then we can print something cool. Ooh, look at that cool gray color. Insert our jump drive, go to print, and it's going to be this exposure test. This is called their XP Finder. It's free to download on their website. Uh, that's Frozen 3D. Again, you can find your own or make your own or whatever you want to do. I just like this because it's quick and simple. Oh, the light turned on. See, so I was right. This doesn't actually activate until the machine starts printing. Okay, so it took 15 minutes. It's interesting that now that it's done that it didn't go all the way up. Yeah, see, I would have liked that to come up to the top when it's done printing like the other one does. And offhand, from what I can see on it, it looks like that actually is going to be pretty good. To get it off, I like to use plastic razor blade. It usually does a better job of getting underneath it. And just peeling it off without causing damage to your build plate. As it shows two scratches right there. <laughs> But anyway, a lot safer than the metal scraper. Okay, we'll take this and we'll go get it cleaned up. But for the most part, it looks like those settings are good. It doesn't say the color or anything on the box. I think this box is just generic. I don't think this resin is water washable like it says on the box. Just to be safe, I'm going to use alcohol to clean it. I believe that they say their standard versions you use alcohol because they do have a uh, water washable specifically for that so. Okay so I got it cleaned and this is what it looks like. If you're not familiar with how to use these Basically what we're looking at is, is the details in, in overall, but if you look at the, the letters, for example, if I can get into focus, if you look at the letters, for example, they're, they're all there, there isn't anything missing. If there was some of them missing, 
from the smaller details there uh, or the smallest peg may be missing then it doesn't have enough time you need to increase your exposure time on the other hand if it looks really bold uh, and filled in then your exposure is too high and you need to lower it everything else just kind of gives you an idea of, of what those textures would look like but you're able to actually see all the details and even the tiny holes uh, in those the rings there that show kind of a a step that's actually just the layer height which again for mine is 50 microns if I lowered that it would be um, there'd be much more steps uh, as it'd be more detailed and more layers in between okay now that this one's done we'll take a look at this this is a werewolf uh, Ariana I don't remember who did it but I'll include the link in the description for that looks like it splashed up into the and I imagine that's why this doesn't go all the way to the top when it's done, so that it, when it drips, it doesn't splash as much, but that definitely splashed. So I'll get the supports off and get it cleaned up and we'll take a look at it. Okay, so here we have them. Here's the base, probably needs to be cleaned again. Still a little bit wet, but just to get a, an idea of the detail in there. Great detail. It's a good color. This was printed at 50 microns. I'm going to go ahead and do another one at 30 microns. I believe that this resin is rated for 30 to 50. And then I also found that my software that I use, Formware 3D, just came out with a new feature that lets you do a variable height. So I'll also try doing it from about 10 to 80 microns. So we're going to go beyond the spec of the resin, but I just want to see what kind of differences we'll be looking at. And the one at 30 microns took about 4 hours and 48 minutes. And it looks like the variable height one took 13 and a half hours, which makes me think that most of those were between 10 and 20 microns. Okay, so now we're just going to look at some of the details. This is the uh, 50 micron, and I'm going to try and get really close on them and, and compare uh, the detail that itself on the models is really good. You can even see all the mistakes I made with some of the supports I had on there. But the thing that we're going to pay the most attention to is the layer lines. You can see down in the paws and in the rocks there as it was building up from the bottom up. The 50 micron layer height is, is what we're looking at. The 50 versus the 30 versus the the 10 just to see how how high of a resolution that that is and you can see that in there in the paws and in the paw marks and the and the rocks it's the most apparent Here's the 30. And of course to, to my eye, very little difference. Nothing perceivable really, unless I'm really looking for it in the in the correct lighting. And then the last one is says it was 10 to I believe it was 80 micron. But I think for the most part it was 10 just by looking at it. The layer lines on this are almost imperceptible, just with how thin and how tiny each layer is. So if you're willing to wait an extra like 10 hours or however much longer it is to do tiny, tiny layers, go for it. For me, 50 micron is just fine.
So now, as for the machine, it works really well, just as I had expected. The only two maybe uh, qualms that I have with this versus the predecessor, the VAT doesn't really have a pourable lip. There's barely an indentation in this back corner for a lip, but it is very difficult to pour the resin out of that. And when you do, it leaks all over and it gets stuck in these side grooves for your hands. And it's hard to get cleaned out of there. Uh, the other thing is the feet on this are not adjustable. They just uh, are screwed in. So you can't use these to auto level if your table isn't perfectly level. You have to use other means. Uh, for me, on my... Uh, other printer on my frozen printer that didn't have adjustable feet either. I had to stick paper towels and things underneath it to get it to, to level. It's nice that on the original Saturn you can actually just use the feet to level it um, and the pour spout is a lot better. Other than that, um, this one does come with the air filter in it. It's, it's larger. It's a good machine. The Nova Standard 8K resin worked really well at varying layer heights just fine. I thank you for watching this video and hopefully it was helpful for you if you're looking at getting one of these machines or just interested in 3D printing in general. And until next time, go print some cool stuff. <laughs>